that doesn't work, then we're going to try to move that dash forward. Again, start with the simple stuff and then work your way up from there. So the ram, if you put it in that channel right here and extend out against the A-post, which is where your dashboard attaches to, you can push a couple inches away so you can get out what you need to get out. And then our rams all have, like they have here, an extension bar. So they will go this far to this far, and if you have the extension bar, it'll go to this far. So, knowing your stuff. And then lifting a steering column here. So he's using a set of spreaders. And uh, one of these chains is going to be attached to, you know, maybe the frame. The other attached to maybe the steering column. And close it up together. And that will lift the steering column up a little bit. And give you a few more inches there if you need it. Cut the steering wheel ring so we can actually cut the steering wheel itself at those points so we can you know typically the lower portion is going to be giving you a hard time of trapping someone at the lap so if we cut here and we cut here then we can remove that whole little piece at the bottom and that's going to help us out um, and it doesn't have to all be those big hydraulic tools they make a, a smaller um, cutting tool I think if there's a name for it that comes to my head Okay, like a pedal cutter. Yeah, it's, it's, two things that it's the size of a toaster, um, but it'll cut. So a small pair of scissors, small pair of shears. Uh, all right. Good. Questions? All right. Again, I kind of flew through that because we did, we already did all that. Go to here, here, 17. Tensioner. All right, so we did this in Livonia just to show people what it's like. Watch his torso. So that's the loudness of it, and that's what it does. It pulls him back into the seat when it operates properly. Seat belt pretensioner. So if you have your seat belt on, it, it detects that you are in a crash or black box. Detects that it is going to fire a charge here down by the B post, and it's going to be loud, like what you just heard. But it's going to all those clicks when you put it on and you you know drop something and you hear that flip, 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 all that. It's going to pull it all the way back and pull you in the seat. Doesn't matter you know what size you are. It will pull that belt against that seat. It's called seat belt pretension. So we were fortunate enough to get a lot of vehicles that we were able to play with. And uh, one neighbor who said, I'm going to get a picture of you deploying the airbag. I said, if you think you have a camera that can capture it with a still picture, be my guest. But um, watch the steering wheel. There's the vent hole, and there's all the uh, you know, steam and uh, powder escaping. So this is an airbag in like super, super, super slow motion. There's your steering wheel. And you can slowly see it's starting to deflate out of that hole there. So 
So when we get there, it's going to be kind of this way. Yeah. Yeah. There is an airbag underneath this uh, little traffic. So again, we can set these things off for training for a lot of different things, but that's a pretty powerful blast coming out of there. This one, I think, is in there. Two minutes. All right, we'll ask. The belts protecting these crash test dummies demonstrate a world first the introduction of an automotive rear inflatable safety belt. This technology is extremely important because we're combining two safety features that we know have a track record for saving lives. That's seatbelts and airbags. And by having an inflatable seatbelt in the rear seat, we'll add additional protection for the rear seat occupants. In the blink of an eye, vehicle sensors will determine the severity of a crash. If required, each belt's tubular airbag inflates with cold compressed gas that flows through a specially designed bubble. The belts would inflate at a slower rate than a traditional airbag and help control head and neck motion for rear seat occupants, including the more vulnerable passengers, young children, and the elderly. Dr. Laura Winston of Children's Hospital in Philadelphia notes that safety belts play an important role in the elderly children. Child injury prevention is really complex. Children are growing and developing. The world around them is changing. And we need to have a broad perspective. Ford's inflatable belt helps spread crash force protection over five times more of the body to enhance head, neck, and chest protection. We plan to introduce this on our next generation Explorer, which is really fitting because we've used that to demonstrate a number of our new safety technologies, like these side curtain canopies that inflate and roll over, and a roll stability control, which is the first in the industry. So another chapter in Ford's leadership in family safety. The inflatable belts could also help increase the relatively low rear belt usage rate, as Ford research participants say it is more comfortable than a traditional belt with more padding and smoother edges. That's really important because we need to encourage people to wear their seat belts, and not many people in the back seat do, only about 60% do, and we really want to get everybody buckled up because that truly does save lives. The inflatable rear safety belt will be introduced first in the next generation Explorer in North America and then in other Ford vehicles globally. All right, so another way to protect those folks in the back. Uh, so it's a crowded scene. It's an old video, Green, but um, this is uh, one of these folks, the person who's leaning in, uh, airbag's going to go off. After the crash, after all of that, there's going to be an impact that. Uh, black box says, whoa, that's not normal, and it's going to send off the airbag. Man kann Zeit dieses Bildmaterial. Der Kollege erlebt bei diesem Einsatz erhebliche Verletzungen. Es gibt jedoch weltweit in über 20 Jahren Airbag-Geschichte nur einen dokumentierten Fall, bei dem es während der Rettungsarbeiten so I don't think we're going to ask you. So, if you don't speak German, he said that's going to leave him out. Day between Sunday and Tuesday. What are we doing on Monday? Taking a quiz. And we're doing it on this. And if time allows, um, 
possibly starting into uh, chapter 18. Chapter 18 is due on Tuesday, as you can see. Um, but if we have time, quiz review, no PT, we might. Um, we may uh, get, get started on chapter 18. So be ready for that one. Um, practicals Wednesday and then next week, Saturday. Week from tomorrow, we have practicals. All right. Um, let's head up to the mezzanine and grab your ropes.